Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to go over all of the important news that happened in the Solana ecosystem last week. And as per usual, none of this is financial advice. You are totally responsible for your own finances. So the first piece of news comes from God Dow, and they're introducing supercharged bonds. So they've been in collaboration with Atrix Finance. So these supercharged bonds allow bonders to earn both God and Serum for all God, Mix, and Mix USDC Atrix LP tokens bonded. So secondary token rewards will continue even after the bonding period is completed. Of course, this is on top of any yield bonders are generating by minting the Mix yield generating stablecoin from Mixture Money. So you can get early access to the supercharged bonds um, if you fill out this form. I think it's probably too late by now because this is like a week old news, but will have a chance to see this in the future, in the near future, I expect. So they believe that supercharged bonds are a product that God Dow can offer for other projects to attract liquidity for their own token. So for example, we could have Gaia come to God Dow to bootstrap liquidity for the Gaia Mix Ectrix LP token. So Gaia will provide Gaia tokens to God Dow as secondary rewards for Gaia Mix bonds on God Dow. And God Dow will launch the Gaia Mix Bonds program with God and Gaia Rewards, and the program will end once all Gaia Rewards are distributed. And through this program, Gaia will gain valuable attention from the God Dow community and build up a large pool for liquidity of their own token. So, whilst this isn't quite what uh, Olympus Pro is or what Invictus Dow is working with Flare, um, this is you know a step in the right direction to actually expand the utility of God Dow beyond just being. Um, a rebased token that people farm for a million percent APY. The next piece of news comes from Apricot Finance. So they've um, set out sort of the next sort of steps that they want to take for Apricot Finance. So they're looking to introduce an in-app swap, have transaction histories, have some farming improvements. So you'll be able to go long and short, PL tracking for isolated reports and PL history. They're going to introduce beta tools and in-app trading. So there's lots more coming, but this is uh, what we're going to see in like the next couple of months or so. The next piece of news comes from Mango Market. So they've added um, two new markets to Mango Market. So you'll be able to trade Avalanche and BNB Perps up to 10x leverage. So if we go onto the site, uh, we can see that trading's already commenced and it's been live since the 14th. So we have Avalanche, it's quite liquid, BNB, less liquid as you can see here if we if we look at the chart <laughs> yeah it's a bit spotty for now and there isn't really that many people market making on the order book as we can see the spread here is about three dollars whilst on the avalanche perp um the spread is like 50 cents but something interesting about this is that drift also have avalanche perp markets so we can look at the difference between the funding aprs and you can craft a a you know trading strategy around this so you're paid to go long on the avalanche perps on drift and you'll get 41 percent in your position and then on mango markets you're paid to go short on your position by 16 percent. so you could go short on mango markets and then long on drift and then you can get an average of these two funding aprs so if you were interested in taking a delta neutral position and you could earn about I want to say 25, 30% APR a year on your USDC, you can go ahead and execute that trade. Uh, Drift Protocol has also added BNB as well. Um, again, you could do the same thing there with Mango Markets and, and Drift, but I don't think it would work too much at the moment because there's not a lot of liquidity on Mango Markets right now. And what's nice about uh, Drift is that they're not using an order book model, so they don't need people to come in and make the markets. The next piece of news comes from Tulip Protocol. So they've converted their leverage farming calculator spreadsheet into a simulator on their DAP. So um, if you're familiar with Frankium and you've used their calculator, it's going to be something similar. Obviously, there's different functions on here and it, and it kind of looks different, but you'll be able to see the PL curve over time as you're yield farming. Um, so this is quite nice. And I suggest going ahead and messing around with it before you start yield farming because it's the best way to visualize how much money you're going to make or how much money you're going to lose depending on different scenarios. And 
you'll be able to judge different strategies um, based on different long tail events. And I, I think this is really cool that Tulip have done this. And I think it's about time. Like they should have, this is something that, that, you know, I think they should have released at the start, but it's nice to see they've eventually done it. Next piece of news comes from Star Atlas. So they've released a few new ships on their marketplace. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. The next piece of news comes from Port Finance. So they've introduced fixed rate lending on Port Finance uh, through their product called Sundial. So users can deposit USDC for fixed rate lending today. If I go into the page, we go to fixed rate, you can deposit your USDC here and get a 3.18% fixed rate APY. And uh, the maturity is March 10th, 2022. So the way that this works is that they split up um, your USDC into two tokens. So you have principal tokens, which represent a one-to-one -one base, uh, which represent one-to-one -one of the base asset earned upon expiry, and the yield tokens, which represent the variable yield gained underlying product over the lending duration. So these two tokens represent the principal value and the variable interest rate will be available for trading on secondary markets. So, th so the principal tokens are redeemable for this underlying asset after the term of period of lending is over and therefore will naturally trade at a discount relative to the underlying asset. So if we see here that one principal token USDC is actually only worth 0 0.993 uh, USDC, but at the end of the maturity period, so March 10th, they will be the same. So what's interesting is that you can LP for the principal token USDC and USDC in Atrix Finance, and you're currently getting paid out 49% APY in port finance tokens. So that's essentially 49% APY on stablecoins. So if you're interested in an opportunity like this, then definitely go ahead and make sure to do so. The next piece of news comes from Tap Finance. So they've now gone live on mainnet. So what you can do, you can come here, deposit USDC into their vault, and then earn a projected 28.44% APY. So this APY is calculated on a weekly basis, so this can vary over time. So what happens is that they take your USDC and then sell a Bitcoin put, and the options premium that they get from selling that put is then distributed to all of the uh, stakers. So if you're interested in that and you want to get you know, another way of generating stablecoin yield, then you can definitely go ahead and use Tap Finance. This is another project that is live on mainnet, doesn't currently have a token. So you, know, you might wanna try it out in case of an airdrop. Definitely make sure to check out the docs on this because there is a lockup period. So if you deposit your USDC into here, and then an epoch starts then you're not going to be able to take your money out so just be aware of that so the next piece of news comes from soulflare so soulflare is a wallet within the ecosystem they've also gone to mobile as well which is quite nice but they've said that uh, slrs is now the utility token for soulflare so if you're not familiar with this um, this is the token for Solrise finance but Solrise finance soulflare they're like part of the same ecosystem and they plan to expand over time so uh, this is their token if you are hoping to get airdrop to token for using soulflare it doesn't seem like they're going to be doing that because um the Solrise team are like trying to build an ecosystem and they've already got a token and they wanted to add more utility to it so they're going to reduce fees in the in wallet swap and more utility coming in the future all fees generated from the soulflare wallet will be going into the Solrise ecosystem dao and they're looking to have this token to be a, a governance token as well. The next piece of news comes from Solape. So uh, Solape have introduced the Solape access card. So uh, the Solape access card is a utility based NFT that offers exclusive membership and rewards to the Solape community. The mint happened on Saturday. So that by the time that you're watching this, um, it, or, it will already be too late. But the mint was only one soul. And if you go into Magic Eden, it's currently trading at 1.09 soul. So if you're interested, I expect, you know, fairly soon people will start capitulating on this. So you'll probably be able to pick it under mint price. But it's one of those NFTs where like, although you miss the mint, it hasn't gone to the moon. So if you still wanted to buy in, go ahead. So if you still wanted to buy in, then there's certainly time. So there's two kinds of cards that you can receive. We have the black card and gold card. So the black card the benefit from holding it is ongoing token airdrops from both Solape and exchange partners and they've actually got a good reputation for that so if i click on this link here we can see the past airdrops that Solape has done 
So even if you take like the top te like five to ten airdrops they've done, like the original valuation of the airdrop has been quite nice. So like eight grand for the original Soul Ape airdrop, um, one point four grand for Lick, one grand for Woof, six hundred thirty nine for Kato. And if you held those, you know, to the all time high, it's quite a bit here. Uh, so that's really nice that they do that. And the gold card owners will earn a ten percent bonus percentage of token airdrops. You'll also get Soul Ape early access. For as long as you hold this NFT, the users will be granted early access to future DEX upgrades and platform projects. Um, access codes or links will be distributed directly to NFT owners. And then you have the Ape House. So chat directly with the team in an NFT gated Discord channel, which is cool. And you know what? They posted this funny video from Hard Rock Nick, so I'm going to play it now. Where is my airdrop? Every minute I, I check my wallet. No airdrop. The devs have misled us again. It's an insider's game and it's rigged. I need my airdrop now. And the last piece of news today um, is it's quite sad because I got affected by this and I know a lot of other people would have been affected by this as well. Um, but this guy posted here, I'm gonna share an experience here, not just going to be sharing the good times only, I experienced my first rug on Solana thanks to Azura DAO. So, yep, Azura DAO was one of the supposed Olympus DAO folks coming to Solana. There's uh, Invictus, Babylon, Azura, and God DAO. And Azura DAO actually rugged. So, their sort of premise was talking about. So, their sort of premise as an own fork was using an innovative NFT system. That's their own words. The more that you held, the higher the APY would be. Um, when you're staking but what ended up happening was that they did the um nft sale and they raised like seven hundred thousand from that and then they did an ido when in which they raised close to a million dollars and then as soon as the ido was finished they deleted all of their socials kicked everyone from the discord and they're completely gone like if you've got old links to their twitter like you won't be able to access anymore because you know it's it's, it's gone so uh, this guy says, I knew the risk, but it's still annoying to lose money. So the stolen funds in Seoul were converted to USDC and sent through Oldbridge to an ETH wallet. So that, so that sucks because I lost money in this while. Like I had free Azura NFTs, which I can no longer sell. I mean, who would want them? Uh, they're just going to sit in my wallet just as like a reminder of getting rugs. Um, and it's just going to sit in my wallet as a reminder of, of getting rugged. And this is one part of DeFi, which definitely sucks. I lost like $750 or something like that. So I could, I could afford to lose that and, and I'll be fine. Uh, but I saw a lot more people in this thread saying they lost like $3,000, um, $2,000. And, you know, it's a real shame. So if you want to avoid stuff like this in the future, only put money into protocols that are actually backed by legitimate uh, VCs. If not, if it's just on a non-dev team, then the likelihood of them rugging like increases exponentially because they can get away with it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one.